All right, everybody. On Monday, I asked the question and I got a response. Thank you so much for your responses. Some of you definitely want me to move on from the topic of responding to Christian nationalists, you know, Christian nationalism type things. Some of you want me to stop responding, and I get it because I'm kind of on your side, so I'm still considering stopping. But uh, a lot of you thought that me responding to this video, Owen Stray Chan on kinism and Christian nationalism, a lot of you said that that would be very helpful to you. And I even got a nice private message about this, a very nice heartfelt message. Um, and so I'm going to do it. I'm going to at least start it. You know, I'm not committing to the full 30 minutes, but I'm going to at least start it. So this is the beginning of that. Now, Owen has um, embarrassed himself so much on this topic. I, I saw yesterday just a, a very nice post from a lady who married an Iraqi man, a Kurdish man, and just told some private stories about Stephen Wolf congratulating her and being very concerned about the Kurds and what was going on there and things like that. And, um, you know, just there's, there's things that a kinist wouldn't do, you know what I mean? And, and not to mention, of course, many people citing the many, many things that Stephen has said in his book and elsewhere that are just obviously not kinist. Um, but, you know, who cares, really, because the, the, the things that, that Owen thinks are, are very evil and kinist and whatever, a lot of them aren't even evil. Like, it's just, it's just, it's just unbelievable. So there's just so much of that going on right now. And, of, co of course, Owen is too cowardly to talk about that stuff. But Owen, Owen's whole little shtick is to play big and bad, you know, with things that aren't even there. The shadow box, the Don Quixote thing. He's a... Ultimately, he's a coward, is is the bottom line. Um, and so that's kind of Owen's thing. But we're going to respond to Owen since Owen clearly won't talk to us. You know, we'll do this thing. I think a lot of you, that's kind of what your point was. Like, if there's not going to be any meaningful interaction, let's at least get some meaningful responses going and instead of just the memeing and stuff like that. And I, I get that. I, do, I totally get that. So let's do this. Let's do it. Uh, first thing I'll say, I know nothing about this podcast or this interviewer. He certainly looks to me like he has a lot of white guilt, <laughs> just the way he's dressed and the way he uh, and all that kind of thing. I, I don't know. I, listen, I don't know a whole lot about style, but I, I don't understand this hoodie underneath the blazer thing. It's a little, I mean, it just looks a little odd to me, but, um, you know, that kind of thing. It almost looks to me like uh, he was wearing the hoodie and, you know, and Owen was like, look, you got to wear a blazer if you're going to interview me. And so he just threw a blazer on. He's like, okay, fine, I'll put the blazer on. I don't know. But may maybe this is an intentional style. It's 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 odd. I mean, I, I don't know. I, again, I don't know anything about style. Maybe this is the latest thing. So uh, let's, uh, let's dive right in. Owen. Let's get into the spicy stuff that's going on online. Oh. I mean, you didn't, you didn't pull any punches uh, in the pre-conference. Obviously, Christian nationalism is a massive topic right now, and sure. I think a lot of people are struggling to get a clear and concise understanding of what it actually this is. This is interesting because every, every other time you hear one of these kind of anti-Christian nationalist presentations, uh, every other time they kind of change the story. Like sometimes it's like, this is a massive issue. Like this is, this is, this is the most important thing. We need to talk about this. And then like the next day I'll be like, well, this is just nothing. You guys are just, no it's a nothing movement. It's going to amount to nothing. You guys have no people. Nobody's talking about this. It's just, it's just your, in your weird corners of the internet, people talk like, it's just like, it's always a different story. Right. And it's like, I mean, I have no opinion on how on the size of this. I happen to think this is a very important issue. Uh, do I know how many people are interested in it? I have no idea. But it's just so funny to hear them kind of waffle. It's very this is a very emotional topic for these guys, and so they, they they end up you know contradicting themselves very often in their presentations. And personally, I thought you did a good job of hey, here's a book, the case for it. I'm going to show you exactly what it says here, but I'm going to focus on one of the things that's being talked about online is kinism. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that you were able to articulate that in the way that you wanted to? Do you believe that it was fair? Have you seen some of the critique online? Would there be any yeah. further clarification you need to do for that? Yeah, well, let me just first say, it's such a blessing to be on this panel. Is this a panel? Whatever this is. Yeah, we're considering this with, a panel. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's a panel. With uh, Aaron Coates, uh, my sister in Christ, who has been so faithful and courageous the last few years, and her husband, James Coates, is an excellent guy. So this wasn't planned, but uh, just very thankful for this couple and my sister. 
Um, in terms of kinism, kinism has long been a reality. The idea that you shouldn't marry outside your ethnicity or your skin color. And at the national level, at the level of nationalism, that a nation should really be composed of one ethnicity or one skin color, whatever it may be. This isn't new. This didn't just come up. Yep. It actually is found on both the left and the right. Um, so what we've seen after the rise of wokeness, wokeness is a real and terrible ideology mm -hmm. that has corrupted many churches. It has changed America. To this minute, wokeness is the dominant force in our time teaching white people, one of its main tenets, that they are effectively white supremacists by nature, without doing anything, without saying anything racist, just by virtue of having white skin, so to speak, and participating in the majority group and culture, racially, you are a white supremacist. You have privilege and you are an oppressor, no matter what yes. you do, that it's inerrant in you. Exactly. And so that has dominated American public and cultural life for several years. There's now been an official kickback against that, um, that, that was in part a good kickback, like in the church, Bodie Bauckham and others, uh, Daryl Harrison, Virgil Walker, G3, ha have pushed hard against the woke ideology that has infected the church. And um, I've been a small part of that as well. But what we have now seen is that uh, things tend to swing between extremes. And so wokeness is one extreme. It's a partial worldview, saying that white people are bad in terms of partiality. And now we've seen the other side crop up, where white people are especially to be preserved as a group. That's also partial. And yep. so the gospel critiques both sides. <laughs> me saying that doesn't make me some kind of deep state operative, you know, uh, woke voice. I am as unwoke as you can get. But it False. does. <laughs> That's just not true at all. <laughs> That's just not true at all. He is not as unwoke as you can get. Um, uh, so, so I guess it's it, interesting the way he's kind of set this all up, right? So he's saying that like wokeness is this like dominant force and uh, it's very evil, you know, things like that. And of course, he boldly stands against it. Of course, after lots of other guys did, he kind of like got behind them. And there's nothing wrong with that, of course. He would never uh, admit that. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but anyway, um, so wokeness is this dominant force and, you know, very evil. And he says that the, that the reaction to that, which he kind of, you know, the way he sets this up is that that's e it's equally evil is for white people to say, hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with being white. Like, let's continue to be white. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I want to continue. Uh, listen, I can see that the woke, the woke church and the woke, uh, you know, you know, you know, agenda in the United States is trying to eradicate, uh, you know, whiteness or whatever it is. Uh, you know, they, they sometimes they just want to eradicate white people altogether, like we see in uh, in uh, in South America or South Africa. And it's like white people are like, no, 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 it's good to be white. Not only is it not only am I not a white supremacist just for the fact that I exist. Not only am I not evil, uh, oppressive, because of the fact that I exist, but actually I like being white, and it's good to be white, and it's fine to be white, and I want to celebrate that, and I want to continue my whiteness, um, and I'm going to be okay with it and happy about it and, and things like that. And he presents that as equally evil. That's not evil. <laughs> That's not evil. I mean, I'm laughing here, but it's just, it's just really like, it's unbelievable to have to say these kinds of things. And, and, and look, if you look at my content, you know what I mean? Over the course of years at this point, um, I've been consistent on this, that, 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 that like, I don't want like, there to be, um, I don't want there to be a violent reaction to some of the woke stuff because that seems like a very, very likely scenario. You know, you push someone into a corner enough, eventually he's going to fight back. I don't want that to happen. But that's not to say that, 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 that white people wanting to preserve, you know, the kind of culture that they have and things like that in the face of people that tell you to your face they're not secret about it. We are trying to destroy that. We want to end that. 
And they're like, well, no, I mean, I like I like having mayonnaise on everything. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to take this seriously. I really am. I'm responding seriously, but I can't help but make light of it a little bit. You know, I like casserole for dinner. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. I do, too. Who doesn't like a good casserole? But my, my point is, like, 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 like people saying that, like, I like to preserve that because I can see you're trying to intentionally destroy it. And so I'm going to intentionally try to preserve that. I think a lot of the impulses of, of like, white boy summer, I don't really know a whole lot about white boy summer. Uh, it sounds a little weird to me. I, I don't know. I mean, listen, I'm, I, I, a lot of white things sound weird to me. I mean, I'm just, just saying. I'm just saying. But, like, evil, like, in the same way that wokeness is evil... Like, like, they're trying to destroy you for being white. Just for the fact that you're white, they're trying to destroy you and label you some kind of a miscreant. And you're like, no, no, we're not. Not only am I not evil just for the fact of being white, but being white is good. I like being white. There's nothing wrong with that. And here, the self-proclaimed least woke person around, nobody's more unwoke than him, He's saying, no, 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 you, you, you think it's okay to be white? That sounds pretty evil. <laughs> I'll never forget the video I did on that. Do you remember that? I forget. I think it was like a 4chan thing, right, where they started putting posters up places, and all the posters said was, it's okay to be white. Like, the most passive way of saying, you know, I'm not ashamed of being white. You know what I mean? It's like not even saying that it's good or, or great or it's wonderful to be white. No, just it's okay to be white. It's okay. And predictably, they, they, pre people on 4chan predicted this is going to cause a massive hysteria. They're going to think this is uh, terrorism. And predictably, they thought it was terrorism. Owen, the least woke person, is doing the same thing here. It's the same thing. It's, he, he, it's Owen is seeing the poster. It's okay to be white and freaking out because that's evil kinism, obviously. <laughs> Tell me how it's not the same thing. Somebody explain. Uh, an Owen Defender, because I know I have some in my channel, right? An Owen Defender, tell me how he's not just doing the same thing. He's seeing the it's okay to be white sign and freaking out like a woman. Like, how is that not the same thing? I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Very, very, the least woke person around. Nobody's more unwoke than Owen Strawn, who was woke five minutes ago that I have to critique not only the left, there are definitely enemies, not in terms of flesh and blood, but ideological enemies to the right. It is an absolute lie to say that there are no enemies to the right, meaning, meaning you don't critique anyone to the right of you. And um, that's what I felt the need to do because that's the a, gospel... That's another lie right there because the whole no enemies to the right thing is not about not critiquing people on the right. It's not about not critiquing people on the right. He told you it's about not critiquing people on the right. That is a lie. He's lying to you again. So that's two lies. The first lie is that uh, he's the least woke person around. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> the second lie, I guess there's three lies. The second lie is that white people wanting to, you know, kind of maintain their whiteness, preserve their culture, their the things like that, their ethnic markers, whatever you want to call it, that's evil. In the same way that trying to destroy whiteness is evil. And three, the third lie so far, and this is three minutes into a, a lie per minute, and he hasn't even been talking this whole time. The third lie is that no enemies to the right, the people are saying that, are saying you should not critique people on the right. No, that's not what it is. What it is saying, though, is you do not try to destroy people on the right using the tools of your enemy. Because your enemy is attempting to do this to you. I'm critiquing you right now, and, and, and Owen, this pains me to say this. I feel like I have to at least include you as a person on the right. <laughs> You're not to my right, of course, but you're on the spectrum of the right, and I am critiquing you. What I'm not doing is attempting to destroy you using the tools of my enemies. I'm not trying to destroy you using the tools of the left. That's what I'm not doing. 
So you've lied three times here, Owen, in three minutes. Full is at stake with kinism, just as it is with, w with wokeness. And then I'm going to pull up. So he's asked him to define. Do you feel like you've defined kinism well? What's kinism? And he, he hasn't defined kinism. He just says, oh, it's just the gospel's at stake. And white people want to preserve themselves. And, um, you know, and that supposedly, I guess that's kinism. I, I mean, I don't get it, guys. Have I, have I missed something here? <laughs> uh, a little bit of the sermon that you had in the in the pre-conference. I'm going to try to try to pull that up. He's is, on Twitter right now. I can tell. You said, and I, I hope I'm quoting this right, <laughs> mm -hmm. and tell me if I'm wrong. I believe in a democracy, not a dictatorship. Can you expand on that a little bit more, too? Because there's a little bit of pushback saying, like, well, America is a constitutional republic, and we're not actually a democracy. You sound like... A left winger when you when you say that. Can you explain that a little I bit love more? The, I love the, the, the voices that he does there. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're just a, yeah, 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 democracy. <laughs> oh man. Or good one, good one. Yeah, Very mature. <laughs> I do voices. This is too. a I'm fun age you. when just standing for basic common sense apparently makes you a leftist. How dare you or woke. <laughs> Um, freedom of speech, you know, religious liberty, what a terrible idea. I, I do not care what people say about me. I do not care. I am reminded of Gandalf. I am no Gandalf, <laughs> literarily or otherwise. <laughs> oh, man. Can you excuse <laughs> Can you expand on uh, this idea of uh, I believe in dictatorship or uh, d democracy, not dictatorship? I, uh, I'm reminded I of Gandalf. I'm a lot shorter than him, for example. Although that hat, I would like one of those hats. That would be pretty fly. But Gandalf <laughs> says at one point, I have not passed through fire and shadow. Whatever he says, you know, to, to land. Did you say that would be pretty fly? He didn't really didn't just say that. Did he just say that? ...or otherwise. I'm a lot shorter than him, for example. Although that hat, I would like one of those hats. That would be pretty fly. But Gandalf <laughs> says that... One Excuse me. He just said that would be... Pr Gandalf... Gan he would like one of Gandalf's hats. That would be pretty fly. <laughs> I, I have to let him finish speaking here, but I, I really just want to end it. I want to end it right there because I just don't think I can, I can continue <laughs> to take this seriously. <laughs> one point, I have not passed through fire and shadow, whatever he says you know, to, to land in this small little controversy, paraphrasing. And I, I haven't done battle personally with wokeness and um, been massively affected by those struggles in order to come out of this and have people call me a leftist because I believe in religious liberty, free speech, democracy, constitution, constitutional republic. These are just lies. It yep. feels right now, there's, there's room for disagreement over Christian nationalism. There's absolutely room. There's different streams of Christian nationalism. There's what I would call gospel-driven Christian nationalism. There's uh, law-driven Christian nationalism. Both of those are viable. Both of those have to be dealt with charitably and carefully. But then there is also, yes, this movement I call mono-ethnic Christian nationalism. And sadly, there is kinism in and through it. Not that everybody who would hold to that even is a kinist, but it's there. You can find it. I quoted sources online. And so they can say whatever they want about me. I'm nothing. Christ is everything. So if I ask you... So, again, like, do you want to expand on that? He, 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 all he did was defend himself for not being a leftist right there. I mean, and, and, and he might, he's not a leftist, but he's definitely a liberal. Um, and in, in the classical sense, he's a classical liberal, and there's just no question about it. And he just says these things like they're, they're, they're just self-evident, like like free speech, you know, I guess. And by that, he means things like you should be able to blaspheme Christ and things like that. If you, if you look at what he's saying in context, 
Um, you know, free religion, free religion, you know, uh, d- democracy. These are just self-evident. They need no explanation. They need no defense. They need no biblical support. I, I mean, these are the biblicists, right? I mean, like, how, how do you go to the scripture and, and say that this is so obvious that you, it does not even need explanation? It does not need defense. It's just not the case. And, and I'm not arguing for a dictatorship. I think the Constitution is great. I'm, I'm pro-Constitution. Um, and I'm pro-Constitution in the original sense where a state could still enact uh, a, 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 you know, church, a, a state church or, or blasphemy laws or things like that. And we're going to talk about that. I'm definitely going to do that content. Those of you who wanted you know, a positive vision for things like blasphemy laws and why it would be uh, a definitively a good thing for everybody to have blasphemy laws. Um, I, I, I'm going to do that content. We're definitely going to do that. But if you notice, like, he's asked to explain further, and he refuses to explain, just says, I can't believe people call me a leftist. By the way, Gandalf's hat's pretty fly. Dog, yo, that hat be fly, yo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that hat. That's some drip. <laughs> Did I use that word right? Drip? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. And he's like, oh, there's this gospel-centered uh, uh, Christian nationalism. There's a law-driven uh, Christian nationalism. And then there's the uh, the, uh, the mono-ethnic Christian nationalism. And that's the kinnest one. That's the kinnest one. <laughs> Specifically, though, would you believe that Stephen Wolf is pushing kinnism? Oh, yeah. That was the critical moment. I got the commercial. Come on. Okay. So, so, so hear me. So hear me. So. This, this interviewer, I'm grateful for you, man. Yeah, I was making fun of how you were dressed. It's a little strange. I mean, hey, listen, I don't know anything about fashion. Maybe you're right on point. I have no idea. I'm not going to make fun of your drip. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, drip aside, thank you for doing this, interviewer. I really appreciate it because you've asked two questions, and you got the first one you kind of got to run around, but it was a little better of an answer. The second one, you got the runaround. And, and so, you know, you're just going to ask a direct question. Thank you for doing this, whoever you are. I, I'm very, very appreciative of it. So he, he tried to, he's trying to distinguish, and, and this is something I predicted would happen, so there's another feather in my cap. He's got the gospel-centered kinism, or <laughs> the gospel-centered kinism. <laughs> By the way, um, in the comment section, or actually email me if you want, if you don't want to be public about this. Who is, in your opinion, uh, you know, the, 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 the brightest kinist out there? I, I'd like to know some names, you know. Who's your favorite kinist out there, uh, I guess is one way to put it. Let me know in the comments or in an email, ad at adrobust.com. Thank you very much for that. That being said, uh, the gospel-centered Christian nationalism, the law-driven Christian nationalism, those are viable, whatever, worthy of respect, I guess. And then there's the mono-ethnic Christian nationalism. And, he, and so he said that. That's what Owen said. And so, you know, this guy, very grateful for, for this question, he directly asks him, because it's very clear that Owen is kind of beating around the bush and hemming and hawing and talking about Gandalf's hat being pretty fly. Is Stephen Wolf a kinist? Is he does he fall into the mono ethnic category of Christian nationalism? And then I guess Owen is saying there's a subset within the mono ethnic uh, Christian nationalism, which should be dismissed out of hand, of course. There's a subset of kinist, though I guess that they're extra evil. So if you're a mono ethnic Christian nationalist, according to Owen, you're very evil. But if you're a kinist mono ethnic Christian nationalist, uh, then I guess that you're extra evil. So is Stephen Wolf that? That's the question that's been asked. Thank you very much, Guy. You're pretty fly. Stephen Wolf's ideas lay the groundwork for a kinist view, and what Stephen Wolf has said publicly um, is definitely kinist. Now he's taken back one of his statements, apparently in some form. He said that interethnic. Twitter. Huh? Yeah, I think it was on Twitter. He said interethnic marriage was relatively sinful, and at, on a podcast, he sort of walked that back. But um, if you look at other statements of Stephen Wolf, he said that ethnicities have a duty to preserve themselves, paraphrasing. And there's no biblical duty to preserve your ethnicity. That doesn't mean that we embrace unbounded, globalist, woke, 
immigration policies in our nations. No. Immigration has to be done carefully. I'm a thoroughgoing conservative, though Wolf and others despise the term conservatism. I, I am a conservative, so I believe in carefully done immigration policies. Um, but that doesn't mean that the Bible teaches that it is a moral good to preserve my ethnicity or my whiteness or what have you. There is no biblical teaching along those lines. The Bible goes the opposite way. The Bible teaches us that it is a beautiful thing that Christ is calling people together from every tribe, tongue, and nation, people group on earth. That's the direction of the gospel. That doesn't mean that every church is going to be the same level of diversity represented in it, or, or that we have to try to mangle our churches so that they're all equally diverse. No, you have to be where you are. But fundamentally, it is not a biblically taught moral duty. It is not a moral good for me to preserve my ethnicity. And inter-ethnic marriage in Scripture is a beautiful reality. Okay, so let's stop there. We, may, a, have to, we may have to go back and and uh, and pick that apart a little bit more carefully in the next episode. So I'm going to try to remember what I wanted to say through all that. Uh, that last minute was chock full of interesting tidbits. Um, so we'll see. But so so anyway, he said Stephen Wolf's book uh, lays the groundwork for kinism, and his statements publicly have been kinist because he said he said something about interracial marriage that he he definitely walked back. And if you notice. He said, apparently walked back, as if he didn't walk it back. He definitively did walk it back. And it's almost as if, the way he said it was almost as if he's just been told that Stephen Wolf walked back and he didn't even look into it. I have no idea whether he did or not. It sounds like he didn't. It sounds like what happened here is that someone told him, I happen to know at least one person who told him, Stephen himself <laughs> told him, "I walked that back on a on a on a cross politic episode and things like that." The way he presented it, it's almost like he didn't even w listen to it, and he definitely doesn't even consider it valid. Like if he did listen to it, he's dismissing the denial or, or the walking it back out of hand, right? So Stephen said on that podcast, "Yeah, you know, I, I was trying to think it through live, and I." The way it came out was not the way I intended it to come out, or something to that effect. And you know, you should do, you should go watch that cross politic episode if you're super concerned that Stevens a kinist for some reason. But he just kind of dismissed it, and he said, and then some other statements are definitely kinist. Like for example, he says there's a moral duty to kind of preserve your ethnicity, and that sounds really scary to a lot of people with a modern mind. Here's the problem, though: if you've read his materials. And if you've listened to him carefully, then you understand that Stephen's view of ethnicity is a very particular view. And it's not fundamentally racial. It's not fundamentally genetic. It's not fundamentally skin color. When he's talking about ethnicity, he's talking about something else that, yes, there's a lot of overlap sometimes when it comes to, you know, uh, genetics and, and, and race and stuff like that. In many countries, that's how it works. In our country, it's a lot different. And in that podcast episode that, 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 that Owen, if you, if you listen to this and that's all you've heard, it's almost as like, it's ridiculous what he said on that podcast episode. If you listen to that, he, he can be, you know, he can share an ethnicity, Stephen, a white guy with a Puerto Rican. And they have the same culture. They have the same heritage. They have the same, you know, uh, you know, m you know, kind of cultural memories and things like that. History, things like that. Not exactly the same, but but these ethnicities are sort of organic. They develop organically. That's what Stephen is saying about ethnicity. So so even if you disagree with him that there's this duty there, then you, you, but you have to understand that he's not talking about you know, skin color or race or genetics uh, fundamentally. And so for, 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 for Owen to just not even mention that, and, but to, to, to bring the specter of racism and kidism and, and you know, that kind of thing, is, uh, it, it, that's, that should be enough for you to realize he's not handling this the way a Christian ought to handle it. I mean, you, honestly, you shouldn't even treat your enemies this way, much less your friends, much less your brothers, much less your brothers and sisters kind of thing. 
Stephen Wolf explicitly denies that Christian nationalism is a white nationalist project. Explicitly denies that. Stephen Wolf explicitly, hear what I'm saying to you. In his writings, Stephen Wolf explicitly supports intermarriage. Interethnic marriage for, for purposes of, 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 of civil solidarity and, and formation and, and, and unity and things like that. He explicitly supports it. Not to mention the fact that many off-the-cuff comments that he's made, you know, showing uh, 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 a black guy with a white wife and saying this is a good uh, and, and proper marriage. Uh, that was uh, Justice, I think, Clarence Thomas and his wife. Um, you know, the, the story I told earlier about the, the woman who, who said she married an Iraqi and he was, you know, very congratulatory of it and things like that. Things that a Guinness would never do! Would never do! He's just kind of dismissing that, like as if that's never been said, that's never done, that's never happened. It's it's just this is this is this is as low as it gets, man. This is as low as it gets, Owen. <laughs> Unbelievable. Did you notice this as well? Where he says, It's ridiculous to th there's no biblical warrant, no biblical duty to preserve your ethnicity in the scripture. Okay. So so Interesting statement. That's wonderful. And then he goes on to say, in fact, the Bible is the opposite. It says the opposite. And then he goes in to quote from Scripture or at least uh, paraphrase Scripture. And what you expect, if he's saying on the one hand, uh, there's no biblical warrant to preserve your ethnicity. It's not a good moral thing in the, according to Scripture to preserve your ethnicity. The, in fact, the Bible says the opposite. So what would you expect to hear, right? You'd expect to hear um, of the Bible condemning preserving your ethnicity they're saying it's bad right that's not what you get that's not what you get did you see he he bait and switched you he mott and bailied you he said on the one hand it doesn't give you the, the it doesn't say it's a moral good to do this the bible says the opposite and the example he used was not related it was like god's and in fact god's calling all nations and tribes to himself and it's like you can actually, listen, listen, you can actually believe both things, that there's some kind of a duty. I'm not saying that there is, but I'm saying if you did believe that, there's some kind of duty to preserve your ethnicity, but also God is calling every tribe, tongue, and nation to himself. You could actually believe that. In fact, I think that's a lot of what Kinnis believe, like actual Kinnists. So he, he bait and switched you there, if you, if you, if you notice. He's, he's, not, he's not using the same categories there. It's, it's, very, it's very sneaky what he did there, very sneaky. And I have to assume that he knows what he's doing. I have to. That can't just be a mistake. There's more I feel like I wanted to say about that, um, but uh, we're going to have to end there. It's been going on for 30 minutes now. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments because uh, it will encourage me to keep going with this. Um, if you didn't find it helpful, let me know that too, and we'll kind of take it from there. I hope you found this video helpful. God bless.